In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate a z-score by hand. In the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you can see the formula for a z-score. z sub i is on the left-hand side of this equation here. The i in the subscript just represents individual, and it maps onto your index number. It just represents the idea that we're referring to an individual here. We're going to transform an individual's raw score, x sub i, into a z-score, a standardized score. And we're going to do that by taking their raw score, subtracting the population mean, and dividing by population standard deviation. Again, remember that when you're dealing with z-scores, you're not generalizing beyond the data. The data is your population. So in this case, these seven participants kind of make up the only people I care about here. They're my population of interest. So first of all, let's decide on which score we want to standardize. Let's go ahead and look at these. We can see that participant number three did particularly poorly on whatever this test is. And so why don't we go ahead and standardize their value here. So I'm going to make a note. X sub three is going to be the person whose score we're taking to standardize. And their score was 43. This is their raw score. Now, in order to standardize that raw score and turn it into a z-score, again, we need population mean and, and uh, population standard deviation. Now, I'll trust at this point that you can calculate the mean. I'll go ahead and give you that. In this case, the mean of these data is 74. So now, the real laborious part when it comes to calculating a z-score is finding the population standard deviation. In some problems, it may be given to you, but in many cases, you'll need to find it yourself. Now, remember that the formula for population standard deviation looks like this. It's the square root of the sums of squares, which again is here. We've done this process before. This is where you take each value, subtract the mean, square it, add up all those values, and then you're going to divide by capital N, remember the size of your population, and then square root what you find. This is the formula for population standard deviation, and again, this is what most of the work in involves when you're calculating a z-score. So let's go ahead and do that now. We already have the mean that we're going to subtract from each value when calculating population standard deviation. So we're going to do 90 minus 74, 54 minus 74, 43 minus 74, and so on. And that's going to be this portion here, x sub i minus mu. So if we do that, we're going to get 74 uh, subtracted from 90 equals 16. 54 minus 74 is negative 20. 43 minus 74 is negative 31. 93 minus 74 is positive 19. 56 minus 74 is negative 18. 82 minus 74 is positive 8. And 100 minus 74 is 26. Now we need to square these values in a new column. x sub i minus mu, that's what we have over here, squared. So 16 squared is simply 256. 20 squared comes out to 400. Negative 31 squared, I kind of got rid of the negative here because it ends up not mattering when you square, but negative 31 squared equals 961. 19 squared equals 361. Negative 18 squared equals 324. 8 squared is 64. And we're almost there. 26 squared is 676. Now remember, we still have this sigma. So the next step is to add up these values. And that's how we're going to get our numerator, called once again the sums of squares. And if you do this, if you add up this value here, you're going to end up with 3042. So at this point, we need to take that 3042. We need to divide by capital N, not N minus 1, because this is a population. So it's going to be 7. That's our population size. And we're going to need to square root this value. And if you do, you're going to come out with a standard deviation of 20.85. So now we have all the values that we need for our formula. And it's a simple matter of plugging and chugging. So I'll go ahead and make a note of our values here to make it really easy to kind of remember what we need to plug and chug. So we're going to take this formula, z sub i. I guess I'll continue my work in red here. So it's going to be z sub i equals the raw score that we want to transform, so 43, minus the population mean, 74. So we're going to end up with a big negative number here in the numerator. 
and we're dividing by sigma, the population standard deviation, which we just found to be 20.85. Now if you do this in a calculator or whatever, you're going to end up with negative 1.49, and that is our z-score. And think about how we interpret this z-score. Remember that a z-score simply represents the number of standard deviations away from a mean a particular score is. So in this case, we are 1.5 or so standard deviations below the mean. So this confirms our initial guess that this participant did particularly poorly on whatever we're looking at here. And that's how you calculate a z-score.